So we are already recording. So for everyone who is watching the recording, welcome, welcome. I'm uh, emailing people who did not somehow get the link, the link. Uh, right now I'm talking to Rafferty. I'm moving over. And let's see, I'm running around over here. Same thing up here. This is our first leg of coaching club uh, meeting session, coaching session. I'm Jenna for all of you who are new. And we actually do not start for 10 minutes. So I wonder if I can start recording. All right. So I'm recording and we're muted. So welcome everyone. This is our first official leg up coaching club coaching session. I'm super, yay, I, I can see the cheering, I love that. I'm super excited. First, I just wanna say thank you to all of you for being the founding members, because that's a big deal. This is a concept that I came up with, with a group of you that are mostly on this call when we did a group coaching club. And I've never done group coaching. So for those of you who are new, I'm seeing all these faces I know, but I see names that I don't know. So I'm Jenna Newton. I've been a life coach for a decade. A decade, I started out doing men and women in coaching, and then I quickly realized that I only enjoyed working with women. So I niched myself into just women. And then I built an amazing business helping New York City women transition to the country and reinvent themselves, um, create new businesses, get into a new lifestyle. It was a lot of fun. One-on-one um, -on -one coaching is very intense. Like I am like this with my clients. It's a, an intense relationship. I've had one client for two years now. I think I'm just like, I've almost turn, turned into her therapist, which to be clear, coaching is not therapy. I'm not here to analyze you or to blame your parents for anything or anything like that. A coach is really there to help you find the best way to get where, from where you are to where you wanna be. And what I love about what I'm doing now, so three years ago, I made the decision to switch to only equestrians because we know we're special. We have a special lifestyle, special demands. And I have to tell you, since I have made that switch, I'm such a happier person. And just like for those of you who are on the call early, I can show up looking like this, which is the real me. Like I'm a little bit of a, not a mess, but I come from the barn. I have hay and, you know, I probably have shavings on my shirt. But when you work with other equestrians, it just doesn't matter because we're all in the same boat. So I love that about you guys. I appreciate it. And I'm super passionate about helping all of you achieve what you want to achieve. So I just wanted to say thank you for going first and also to let you know, so to do this course, I, I joined a coaching course and the course that I'm in, which is based out of Canada, I'm actually going to Canada. So if anyone's in Toronto, I would love to visit you while I go to Canada. But this course is teaching me how to deliver the best information to you guys. So just know that I'm being coached by a man who does this for Tony Robbins, Brendan Bouchard, like some of the big people, because there is a way for a membership site to be very clear and succinct and not overwhelming. Because what I want this to be for you guys is a club that you look forward to. You're like, yes, you know, I can't wait to hear the nugget that Jenna's gonna give us. I'm going to try to make my videos short and to the point. I want everything to just, I don't want this to be another time suck of you guys on the computer. I want it to motivate you to go do the things that you wanna do. Does that make sense? If you nod, I can see you. Okay, so just know that my top intention is that this club gives you what you need and that's it you know, that you have accountability. It is going to be super fun. The guy coaching me is huge on contests. He loves contests and he loves people getting prizes in the mail, which you guys remember when I did that last time, I was like, oh my God, but he's big on it. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to do whatever he says 
because he coaches the big big guys and I want to do this right like I want it to just be very exciting for you so congratulations for being here a bunch of you who are not smarties wrote into me emailed in and said Jenna I've never had a coach I don't even know what to expect so just to keep this short what you can expect is that I have lots of strategies I have done a bazillion seminars I'm always in a coaching program and what I learn are ways to help people overcome what's holding them back like Beth's video today if you are a smarty I loved her video. She, when she said, um, she said something like, and what do successful people have that we don't have? And I was like holding my breath thinking, Beth, no, you are a success. And she goes, nothing. They've got nothing, yo, you know, in total Beth fashion. And I was like, oh my God, she's right. She's so right. So um, that's just to say, I'm always learning and I want each of you, as we go through tonight's program, to really get that this is about you personally, especially because I capped the group at 50 and we hit 50 members, so that's awesome. But I'm shutting, and I know some people do marketing of, I'm shutting down tonight, but they're really not. They're going for another month. I'm serious. This is shut down tonight. And I'm done with the marketing. Marketing's not my favorite thing. I actually just love the coaching. But now I can focus on you guys. And I want you to really get clear. I hope everyone got their notebook. Get really clear on the first thing that you want out of this club. And we're, I know some of you sent me a list of 20 things. And we can address that. And it's great to have 20 goals. But sometimes if you do too much at once, you cannot hit any of them so that, and if you're an overachiever and you can, I'm not limiting you, but I just, trust me on this, just experiment for May that you pick one thing that you really, really are passionate about. So um, before I get into talking about the goals, I wanna let everyone know Kajabi is a platform. It's a educational platform that I bought. I own this platform and Tony Robbins has it, and Brendan Burchard. As you can see, I'm trying to align myself with the big, if the big guys are doing it right, I'm doing it. Thanks very much. I really, I feel so inspired lately. Like, I have, I have a mission to help so many people, and Facebook was weirding me a little. I just felt like, you know, I read an article in the New York Times about Mark Zuckerberg and the trouble he's in, and I don't ever want Facebook to go away, but I also don't want to build a community and an education that could go away. So Kajabi was a huge investment, but totally worth it for me because everything that I put in there, like just think every module that goes in there, every teaching is there forever in the library. So when you come back or you want a refresher on something, it's yours. You're not scrolling through Facebook and frustrated. And so this is just going to grow and grow and grow. Um, the yoga teacher that I hired to teach just us yoga moves for equestrians, we're going to have a whole library. So at any time you say, you know what, I want to work on that hip flexor move. Well, then you're just going to go and hit the video that says hip flexor. So I'm really trying to think long term with this. And Kajabi was step one with doing that. Um, I've also hired two staff members, which is super scary, and their salaries are going on a credit card, but <laughs> I now have a team, so we're team smarties, and um, one of them is Ashley, and she calls herself my assistant, but she's not. She's brilliant, and she's really my team, but she's handling tech for me, so I know we've had a few tech issues can't get the avatar on, how do I log in quickly? She's building us a little handbook so that everyone, I don't want everyone emailing her, she will get it done fully. I have my own tutoring lesson on Friday. So I so appreciate your patience with technology because we will get it done, but it's a learning process. It's not, when she shows me the back office, I'm just like, <laughs> that you're worth every penny that I pay you. So if you get an email from Ashley, know that she's totally legit and she's part of Team Smarties. And then my other team member is Ross, 
who's also working with Leslie, who's amazing. And he puts together technology for me and he does my ads. So what I've done is basically set myself up so that I can just be a coach, which is what I really want to do. So if you're new to this and you're saying, well, what can a coach do for me? What I can do for you is I am always here for you. Do not think Jen is too busy. I can't email her with that question or even text. I know a lot of you have my phone number. If I am not doing something, I will get you back an answer immediately. If I'm with someone else or riding my horse, I'll get back to you that day. But I'm, especially in the beginning when we're really making this happen, I will do anything for you basically. I will find a strategy, find a solution, talk something through so you can find an alternative way, but use me as your personal life coach. That's what brings me joy. So I just wanna be clear, don't think Jenna's too busy. I'm not too busy for you guys. You stepped up for me and now I'm gonna step up for you. Um, I talked about staff, oh, the club code. So when we have these calls, people may put things out there that are personal. And when I read the questions that people ask, I'm not gonna say who asked them because what does it matter? We can all learn. But if someone says something private in here or in the chat room, please just honor that when people are working on their goals, they're vulnerable. You know, they're saying, this is hard, I'm challenged. You know, I have this or that, please honor that. That really is part of the sacredness of this. Um, oh, one big thing that I came up with either last night or the night before, and I think you guys will love this. I think some of you will be very excited. So I'm very into tithing. I, I want to live my life in a way that I give back. And so as I was thinking about that, as I was sort of daydreaming of how big this could be and, you know, maybe someday I'll be the Tony Robbins of the equestrian world and I'll just be helping women everywhere. I thought to myself, wow, what if I used a percentage of this club for horse rescue? And I was just like, that's the best idea ever. So I know right now I'm just a small drop in the bucket, but you put a lot of energy into something, it will grow, but I'm going to start it right now. So this month, um, I'm going to find out what the normal percentage is that you do for a company that's, you know, smart business wise, but I'm going to choose, I don't know if it'll be every month, a new horse rescue, because that might not be enough money, especially in the beginning, but you'll be fully aware of which horse rescue it is. And then I want to just congratulate, um, Mary Beth Gooseman, who wrote to me and said, well, not sure if you were asking, which very proactive of her, but she works for the Equine Rescue and Adoption Foundation in Palm City, Florida. So because she stepped up, Mary Beth's rescue is the first one. So if any of you have a rescue that you want me to consider, just email me and I'm going to start a running list. Um, but that's something to always think about, even in all of your businesses, you know, where can we give back? In my coaching, I love to encourage all of my coaching clients. When you're struggling in your life, the, one of the fastest ways to shift your energy is to help someone else. It's amazing. It's a little bit miraculous, but you take the energy off of me, 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 and I'm stuck and I, I don't do anything right to focusing on something else, it's a really great energy shift. So that, were, that was just the sort of housekeeping that I wanted to do. Now I'm going to get, and Mary Beth, thank you so much for kicking us off with that. I'm really excited for the tithing. I think it's a great thing. All right. So one of the questions that came in was, how do I maintain focus and clarity when there is so much change in my workplace? And I think a lot of people can have that um, if there's a change of staff or if you're a teacher and all of a sudden things above you are changing or, I mean, anywhere in your life, how do you stay focused when there's um, kind of chaos above you? And so what I came up with with that is basically you have to really pick and zoom in on the project that you're working. Like what is your actual job 
description, you know, where, what were you hired to do? What's your main priority? Because all of us who have a job, there is something that is the crux of what we do. Get super focused on that. And then the second part of that, because she also wrote that her superiors keep talking about so much more is coming, more to come. So the only way to really put the kibosh on all of that is to have open communication, which is not always the most fun conversation, but whether it's to your principal of your school or your boss or your supervisor, when you stand up for yourself, you're setting a boundary. You're saying, listen, I'm amazing at my job, but you're pulling me all these different places. I can't do what I'm here to do. So what exact, what's your expectation? And when you are super clear with people, you'd be amazed at like what can happen from that. So if anyone is in a tough work situation where too much is being asked of you or there seems to be no, no direction, the best, don't just, don't just let that happen to you day after day. That's an energy suck. Talk to the powers that be, get clear definitions, have open communication, and that's you really taking a stand for who am I in this company? So I hope for the person that asked that, that you'll step into that because the person who did it has stepped into so many other amazing things in her life. And she wrote to me, I've created boundaries in all other areas. Work is my last place. So you want to practice that in your work. Um, from there, I want to talk about how do we start this program? Everyone, some of you came in on day one, some people are entering today. So there's a little bit of wiggle room in where is everybody? So here's where I want us to all come together and start here right now. So everyone take a deep breath. We are all in this together. And whatever goal you write down tonight, we are going to focus on it until you accomplish it. Look in my eyes. That is my promise to you. <laughs> Mary Ben, that is my promise. And I just love that. And, you know, when my family, when I talk about what I do at dinner and stuff, and they say, Mom, how can you guarantee it? Like, you can't guarantee it. What if they don't do it? And I'm like, oh, they're going to do it. That's going to be so much fun. I will believe in you until you believe so much in yourself that we get this done. So just let that sink into your soul. Like you have someone on your side who is just out to find a way for you to achieve what you want. So what is step one? Step one is declaring what you want. Many of you sent me great emails. You're very clear in what you want and that's fantastic. Some of you are still a little wonky and I just want you to have clarity because when, when you are clear, you can create a path. When it's wonky, 99% is not the same as 100%. 100%, not 1% is wiggle room. We want to take the wiggle room out so that you feel what it feels like to be a person of commitment, a person who does what they say no matter what. And that's not in a, that's not in a negative way. That's in a very positive, like, believing in yourself way. And I want to just give you an example of that. So if someone says, I'm going to health and fitness is their goal, because so many of us have that on our list. And they say, I'm going to move my body four days a week. And then uh, they did it three times. And on that fourth day, we get weird. It's almost like we're rebellious. Like I'm not doing that fourth day. On the fourth day, if something happens, if it's pouring rain or you kind of don't feel well, instead of just skipping the thing that you said you were going to do, do something, do a part of it. Walk to your mailbox. Because you guys, it's not about that you ran four miles all those times. So I, I know for Linda Bailey it is, and I love her for that. But for most of us, it's about creating a lifestyle. And that's part of what I want to help teach you is goal setting is amazing and people who reach goals are fantastic. But don't you really think in your heart that the reason you do all of this is to feel happy? Can you guys nod if you think like, isn't goal achievement about happiness? It's not, 
Like we're, none of us are getting gold stars. No one's gravestone is going to say Mary Beth achieved all her goals. You know, it, it's about your life. It's about the dash in between those numbers. So I want to help you learn to set up steps that you feel happy in the progress that you don't beat yourself up when things go wrong because you made an adjustment. So when you set that goal and then you look at, so you start what you want and then you set the goal. One thing I want to advise is with that goal, either set a celebration, something you're going to do, or make the goal have um, a strong pull. Like say you're on a health quest. It's great to have a race that you're going to do or, um, What's, what else besides a race or a horse show that you're going to compete in because you want to feel great in your britches. You know, like it's nice to have something that defines why you work so hard during that time in the beginning, especially because we're creating habits, but eventually these habits become a lifestyle. Does that make sense to everyone? Like I want you to have a, a lifestyle that you love, not just I do this because I'm a robot because I wrote it in my planner. Like no, everyone brushes their teeth no matter what. What if you did a little bit of yoga every day, no matter what, because it made you feel amazing. Have any of you seen like an 85 year old yoga teacher and you're just like, what? How does she look like that? There's something amazing about yoga and I'm so resistant. I, it was just like meditation. I wanted to meditate for 10 years and it took me 10 years to make it a habit. Now I meditate no matter what. It's like brushing my teeth and it changed my life. But when I see some of those yoga ladies that are just limber and beautiful and they glow, I think there is something about yoga, which is why I'm including yoga in this program because I want us to just practice one pose a day, the same pose. So it's gonna be the same pose every day for a week so you really can get into it and then we'll switch the next week. So I've hired a yoga instructor to come film with me because you're gonna to get to see, your, if yours truly can do these poses, you guys can do these poses. But I wanna create this lifestyle that when you wake up and you see your yoga mat, right? That's the other thing we're gonna be doing is setting up for success. I don't want you to have to go in your basement or get your yoga mat out of your car. These are all steps that can be preventative for you doing it. Your yoga mat should be like right next to your bed if you do it in your bedroom or right when you go downstairs. So part the next part from setting something at the end of your goal is setting yourself up for success. Like those of you who are doing walking, running, hiking, any of that, I want you to start thinking about when is the best time for you to exercise? Some of us are morning exercisers, like we have to get it done first thing in the morning or in our hearts, we know we're not gonna get it done. Other people like to do it on their lunch hour and others do it when they get home from work. But it should be set up, like your sneakers should be at the front door, you should have your running clothes in a bag ready to take with you to work. Like this is, these are, these seem so simple, but people don't do them. And then it just becomes an excuse. Oh, I forgot my running clothes. Now I can't do it at work. You know, so learn to set yourself up with all of this. It just, it makes it smooth and it makes it all these little anchors are saying to you, Peggy, this is what you said you wanted to do. Remember me, healthy equestrian lifestyle. And you're like, all right, healthy equestrian lifestyle. Um, for all of you who are doing nutrition, okay, this one is so simple, yet so many of us don't do it. One is cleaning out our cupboards and our refrigerator and our pantry. And we can all say, but my family, but my family. You know what? My kids stopped getting chips with their hummus and with their salsa because I am addicted to chips. I can't eat just one. I eat like a whole bag of chips. It's disgusting with guacamole. And so now I only have cut up vegetables and it was a little bit of a complaint for a while, but now this is what's in the house. So don't set yourself up with temptation. Have only great things in the house if nutrition is your deal. On Sundays, meal prep, you know, uh, 
An hour of planning will help you stay on track during the week. So I know you guys have all heard this before, but it is this simple stuff that creates your habits and your lifestyle. So no matter what your goal is, what I want you to think, one, I want you to simplify. Don't overcomplicate what you're trying to accomplish. Keep it fun. If you're not enjoying your goal, achieving your goal, we should talk because the journey, like the progress, you shouldn't be enjoying it. You should be in the chat room saying, hey, I hit one milestone today, I'm celebrating. Because why else are we all working so hard? You know, why it's so much easier to be lazy, isn't it? Like all of this planning and all the things all of us are trying to do, we're spending an hour discussing how we're gonna work hard. Really, we're all like, can't we just watch TV tonight and go to bed? It's so much easier but that's not living a life you love. Living a life you love is like being healthy and vibrant. And you know, when someone achieves a goal, so like a girlfriend of mine quit college in her junior year, and now she's 47, she's my age. And going back to school was like the biggest nightmare. She just finished today. She graduated. She did her last year. She's like over the, she's crazy. I know Mary Beth, that's amazing. And I, I just looked at her and I was like, you're amazing. But I coached her all the way through doing all of that, but she did it. And to see someone achieve a goal like that. So think in your heart and there's, and I know all of you, your goals are different. There's two of you on this line that your goal is drinking more water. I know that sounds simple, but it will change your life and will accomplish it. There's one of you on the phone call who sent me a spreadsheet of every, I mean, it was the most elaborate. I know, Mary Beth, my eyes were like, oh, I could learn a lesson from this woman. She is amazing. And that's the point too. Each of you are trying to do something different. There's no comparison. It, everyone's on their own journey. And what you see on Facebook isn't real. So whenever you get on Facebook and all you see is everyone achieving everything, just know there's always a story behind it and cheer for the people who are doing it because that brings about great energy. If someone else can do it, you can do it. But in this group, let's not compare, just stay your path, keep it simple, um, set your dates. So the other part of this is we're working a month at a time. And your goal may be a lifestyle goal. Like I know Peggy is all about health and wellness. Leslie's doing that too. And as months go by, you'll add different goals. But when you just look out one month, try not to extend it so far that it becomes overwhelming. We, I want to bring this in and bring it close and do it day by day. Because if you think about it, some goals are so big. When you just think about the goal, it seems like, how will I ever do that? But when you take it from that date and you back it out into chunks, that's how you do it. So if anyone has a goal that they are not like able to time-wise back it out, email me, email me your timeline and the goal, and I will help you back it out. And you want to be realistic. That's the other thing. I've learned from every coach that I've ever worked with that we... Listen to this carefully because it's so true. We overestimate what we can get done in a day or a weekend or even the summer. Have you guys ever done this where you're like, this summer I'm gonna blah, blah, blah. And you have a to-do list that's like, build a barn, win at this shit. Like, it's just incredible. You totally overestimate it. And then you get disappointed because there's just no way you're getting that all done in a short amount of time but we underestimate what we could do in say one to three years. So if someone's starting a business, that's a great example. If you're starting a new business, you may, those beginning six months may seem like, oh my God, I'm doing so much work for so little, but it's front end work. And that's where persistence comes in and what that business can grow to in three years, you have to have that vision. So, don't beat yourself up that you're not getting the short-term gains or even health and wellness. 
like I'm healthy for a week and I get on the scale and I'm like, liar, <laughs> I've been healthy all week. Why do you say that to me? And it's because like, you didn't get a certain way in a week. You're not going to get out of it in a week. So lighten up on yourself about what gets done in the short term and just know that if we take it day by day, stay present, that we can achieve no matter how big your goal is. I know some of you on this line have huge goals and we will do that just as simply as we'll do the little goals. So that's the, the simple path. Get clear on what you want, put something at the end to either celebrate or like make it a pull, like a race or a horse show, and then back it out from the day, from the day that you're done to today so you can break it down. Keep that simple, okay? That's kind of the framework. Now in your journal, if you guys wanna write this down, this is what I want us to work on together. You can email me questions, you can put it in the chat room, but this gets you over your obstacles and sets you up for a better belief system. So the questions you wanna ask are, and you know these answers deep down, they may not come right on this call, but you do know them. What stops me from achieving my goal? Most of us know the thing that comes up because we do it again and again. Like if you've been struggling to achieve a goal your whole life, there's an obstacle. Like there's something a little deeper than I just can't do it. And we want to figure that out. We want to dig deeper and help you come to the place where you overcome that obstacle. So what stops me from achieving this goal? Write down later when you're working in your journal. Um, and then what are my triggers to not keeping my commitment? So an example for that, a trigger for me for not riding is it's raining or it's cold. I'm such a weather ninny. I'm like, when did that happen? When I was young, it could be like a torrential storm and I'd think, this is gonna be so exciting. We're gonna ride in the lightning. Now I'm like, it's windy, I'm gonna get fucked off. It's like, I'm such a ninny. So I know that's my trigger. So I use one of my personal favorite tools is accountability and this is how I use it. Since being with you guys for 17 months, I have been so uber healthy because I have to be, because I can't preach it to you guys and then I don't do it. So working out was my downfall. I would say I was gonna work out, no one knew what I was doing, so I didn't do it. I really, that's the honest truth. I just didn't do it. I didn't even feel guilty. I was just like, I'm not doing it. But then we started with this group and so many of you were so dedicated. I thought, you've gotta come up with a better plan. So I now work out six days a week and I have a friend meeting me every single one of those six days. That was my solution because I will not let a friend down. There is no way. Plus it makes it more fun. It's like therapy. You know, Monday, you guys all know that I hike with a group that kicks off my week. And then I have a very definite schedule, same time it's in my planner and on my calendar and I would never let them down. So that type of accountability totally works for me. And then as far as my triggers, my riding partner is Joyce. And I say to Joyce, if I cancel because of wind, you need to call me up and be like, listen, Ninny, you're getting old, get down here. So she does. So if you can find people in your life, live people, I mean, our group can be accountable like this, but when someone is waiting for you to exercise, or you have a partner at work at your school that will walk during your lunch period, it's just, it's really setting you up for success. So those are the questions I want you to ask, and we're gonna use what you come up with as material to help you each personally overcome whatever is holding you back, because it is your mindset. What Beth said today in her video was so key. What we need is already within us, but something, it could have happened when you were five years old, and I'm not getting into the therapy part, but we do have triggers that then set us on this downward spiral, and then we're off course. So having a group like this, one, always brings you back on course, but what if we could find what it is 
that is your obstacle and find a way to change it. So I wanna give you one exercise to take away from this call to do. It's something physical and I, I love it. So you start with making, a. I know we made a list of 20 things that we like to do. Now I want you to make a list of 10 to 20 things that you love about yourself. What do you ladies love about yourself? And I bet that's a question you haven't thought about much. Like we're always looking in the mirror and we hate our hair and why are my thighs fat and why do I have a muffin top on my britches? And, but we rarely think, you know what? I'm really good at blah, blah, blah. All right, so you make your list, go through it, and then circle or highlight the one that really gives you a feeling of like, I do love that about myself. I would wanna be friends with that part of myself. Then close your eyes and let that feeling sink in. And you wanna do something physical with your hands. What I do is like a prayer position, just cause I like latching my fingers and I hold it to my heart and I close my eyes and I think that thought of myself like, I am an amazing friend and I love seeing my friends succeed. Like knowing that I really am such a joyful person makes me feel good. What, how you use this is anytime, anywhere that you're all of a sudden you get a negative feeling or you're not about to keep a commitment to yourself or just negativity creeps into our brains from no, anywhere. I mean, here in the Northeast, it's been gray for 7,000 days. We have negative thoughts creeping in our heads from nowhere. But this is an anchor. This is an instant mindset change that you do whatever hand motion you wanna do and you fill yourself with that feeling about yourself for a minute. Just hold on to it for a minute and then go back to what you were doing. I promise you, it changes your chemistry. It changes whatever situation you were in and helps you move forward fo heart focused. You know, like that's a beautiful way to go through the world is heart focused, coming from a place of love, not of fear. And I'm gonna help you with that as long as we're together because basically you are in your life reacting and, um, giving off energy from two places, love or fear. And when you come from love, miracles happen, situations open up for you, people are attracted to you because you're, you're loving, right? The four agreements, exactly. <laughs> love that book. And when you come from a place of fear, there's so much wisdom in that book and I love how easily it reads. Like, and I have a good June book too. I just found it in my bookstore yesterday. But anyway, um, when you come from love and not fear, you make better choices. You are calmer. You know, you really, another thing we're gonna work on in this group with our goals is what story are you telling? You know, what do you say to other people on Facebook in your own brain? The story that you're telling is either coming from love or fear. I'm not going into that tonight, it's a whole nother topic. But all of this comes down to how we can help you stick to your goals every day. Your planner is an amazing tool. Of course, I love the planner. But as, mo as most of you know, writing it down isn't enough sometimes. And it actually, then it can work against you because you write it down and you didn't do it. And now you feel guilty. And now you're looking at the line going, do I cross it off? Do I pretend I don't see it? So what I want us to work on, because we're an intimate group, is how you feel about yourself and how that is what creates the habit, which creates the lifestyle. And once you guys get this, like I have to tell you, I, I can achieve a lot of things in my life because I've mastered this rhythm. I, I'm, we're gonna find a beautiful life rhythm for each of you where you know where your genius zone is. You know when you should be doing creative work, like that's when your mind's the sharpest. You know you should work out in the morning. You know that if you don't schedule your lessons for the whole month, you'll probably skip riding. Like you just, you find your rhythm in life that serves you and then you just insert different goals and they get done because you know, you're not fighting against an upstream deal. Does that make sense? And, and each of you will have your own rhythm and it, 
each of you will be your own beautiful song. But when you learn that rhythm and then you have a supportive group to really support you in getting it, and you have a personal coach to help you get over any obstacles, what is there not to accomplish? Like, do you guys feel that there's really nothing that you can't accomplish and it doesn't have to be hard. I am not a put your nose to the grindstone person. Who the hell wants to do that? Whoever made that term up was like, put your nose to the grindstone? No thanks, that sounds great fun. No, I want you to like find your joyful energy, find what excites you and inspires you. And if you hate going to the gym, F the gym, don't go anymore. Find something else. You know, there's other ways to be physical. There's other ways, people who are on diets, I'm just not a fan. I'm not a fan, unless you can stay on it the rest of your life. You know, I would rather that you lose the weight slower, like not lose 30 pounds in, you know, zero time, but that it's because you're changing your lifestyle. Because if you diet and lose all this weight, what, then you're going back. I don't know, it just, the diet industry makes me a little crazy because with nutrition, with proper nutrition and moving your body, you will get to the state that you wanna be in. And the other thing is, as long as you're healthy, I'd love for us to get like a better mental image of ourselves of what being healthy looks like because it's different for everybody. So if you're moving your body, drinking water, getting sufficient sleep, doing a yoga pose, and you look a certain way and feel great, I would say you're winning. Does that make sense to you guys? Like not to, there is no comparison. We can't all look like the Ariat model and her britches and her waist is like that big. I'm always like, who are these britches for? Oh my God. It's so, the older I get, the more I'm like, we need riding clothes for 50 and older. <laughs> they need that anyway. So there's ways to keep achieving your goals fun and focused. And I'm going to keep this simple. Like the questions, those two questions, that's your homework. You know, work on getting clear. Email me, text me. We will figure this out together. Um, yeah, it's just, it's going to be fun. It's going to be simple. When you, anytime that you want to switch your energy, use your love anchor, it works. And then if you get bored with it, you can switch it up and pick something different, new that you love about yourself. Um, so that's, yeah, that's what I wanted to say quickly. It only took me 42 minutes. So I am going to unmute everybody. All right, so now we can hear your household. So don't yell at yourself. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, there's Linda. Hi, Linda Bailey. Hey. Hi, Linda. Um, so, but I'm at work. You're going to want to mute me, and I have like a okay. mic on. So. All right, I will mute you so you can work. There you go. So, just so we're clear about things in the club, everything technology wise will be getting better and better. We're just learning it like the module drip series, you know, everything. If you're not getting emails, Beth wasn't getting emails. I, she was on the list in the back office, so I wasn't sure why. But we're on it. We're working this all out. Everyone will have an avatar. Um, use the chat room for accountability, but it's definitely different. It's not Smarties. It's not like that constant, I don't want people to have one more place to have to go and check in. I want you to just go put what you're doing, like your step, if you need help, write in there that you need help, but it's more, that's the accountability piece. So use the Smart Equestrian site still for our social family. But this is where anything that comes up, I, I don't care if you need me to text you every morning to check in on you. For this, while we're creating habits, I'm open to doing it. So the greatest gift you could give me is to be honest with me, to ask for what you need, because I want to see amazing transformation stories. Like I, I want something out of this. I want you to transform your life so that we can tell other riders this is possible. And that, that means you guys play full out, you have fun, you're vulnerable, you just decide, I'm really doing this. You know, like really be in it. 
Beth, your video was just spectacular. Yeah, I really was. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So um, you just put it out there. It's, it's a way that you really identify with. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Does anyone have a question that you want answered in, if you're good in this group setting? If you have something private, you can absolutely uh, talk to me afterwards. Go ahead, Leslie. Okay. Well, for somebody like myself, who's very active, you know, I go to gym, I have my fitness boot camp, I've been doing great, la -di da 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 and then I have a, you know, my knee goes out, okay. So I'm seeing the surgeon Thursday, we're gonna evaluate why it's giving me so much trouble. But with the rain, I, I can't hike all these dogs, you know, I can't go hiking in this, it's pouring rain, I'll get sick. Right. For somebody who's as active as I am, I'm going from, you know, the gym four days a week to nothing. What do I do? So, uh, with my knee injury, especially with my right. knee, what do I do? Leslie, when you have an injury, that's, yeah. that's a game changer. Like you can't yeah. help yourself through an injury because you can get hurt more. So this is a time where you might want to explore something like look yoga. Up, I can look up yoga poses for you that are low impact. Okay. Like, while you're resting your knee, you could yeah. be flexible in your body. You, so okay. always look for a solution, rather right? Than, How is this limiting me? Right. Yeah. Cause okay, I'm getting, so I will find you some low impact yoga so that you're staying active and you may actually improve other parts of your body while your knee hurts. And then in the end you end up ahead of the game. Right. I might go back to the gym tomorrow, but I wanted to see what's going on first. Whenever we have an injury, yeah. she hurt her foot, she took time off, switched her whole workout around healed herself and now she's back running like, i don't think it'll ever heal this is an old injury as so right but instead of focusing on our limitations we want to say okay right. this is what else can i do right what else can i do exactly right. so i'll right. find so, you okay anyone else have a question i do what was the second question the second question what? is what is my trigger that keeps me from keeping my commitment and mine is, oh, it's the weather. So a lot of times when you're working towards a goal, you're great until something is triggered and then the excuses fly. So if we can find our triggers, we can set them up for success or we can um, get rid of the trigger. Okay. Who else? What other questions? I have a question. I don't know. I'm getting all the emails because you guys are talking about an avatar and I don't know what you're talking about. So have you, are you, you're in the chat room? No. Okay. So we need to get you in the chat room. So we have an accountability system that's part of this, that when okay. you logged in, it said join the empowered equestrian chat room free. So we have yeah. to make an instruction manual because we had never logged, we logged in five minutes before you guys did and went through the whole thing. So now that we're learning what's confusing and what's not, we'll have a starter's manual. But that's okay. a part of this, Jeanette, is it's a chat room to put right. what you're doing, where you need help, and everyone has an avatar. Some people's loaded right up, other people it won't load. Okay. So we're working on that. Okay. So if anyone is listening to this recorded video later on, just know that technology solutions are there. But if mm -hmm. you're not in the empowered equestrian chat room, once you log in, join that room. Anybody else? Anything you want to ask is game. No topic is on. I hope you guys. Oh, go ahead, Linda. Oh, this is a bad question because. Like I missed the first part because I couldn't figure out how to get on here. But um, what was the first question? And you don't have to explain the whole thing. Just yeah. what was it? Oh, so the two I questions. Do my homework. Doing, that's okay. The two questions we're doing in our journal is what stops you from achieving your goal? Like okay. Most of us know we have a few stopping points. We get to a certain place and then we're like, yeah, I'm comfortable in this, and we okay. don't reach the goal. And then the second. And then the second one is the trigger. Right. Okay. That's okay. good. Thank you. We're going to work. Those are going to be like our digging exercises. Yeah. We can come up with, you know, why don't we achieve our goals? Beth said that today. It's a great question. Why don't I achieve my goal? Why do some people and why do some people not? Everyone, it's available to everyone. That's the, the great news. 
The hard news is it takes personal growth. And not everyone's up for personal growth. Some people just want to stay where they're at. So, and the other part of this is with personal growth, you're not always going to be at a 10. So when you're, the days you're not feeling at the 10, just keep that lifestyle, but like take care of yourself. The four basic things that will change your life health wise, getting enough sleep, proper nutrition, moving your body and hydrating. I'm not kidding. Those four simple things will get you on a better road. I say that again. Um, say getting, getting enough sleep and knowing what enough sleep is for you. For some people, it's seven hours. For some people, it's 10 and a nap. So figure it out. Um, <laughs> proper, proper nutrition, moving your body, and hydration. And I would add to that vitamin D. Because when I don't get sunshine, this girl gets a little like, what is this all for? It's dreary. <laughs> 7,000 days of gray. I was like, 8,000 at least. It's, <laughs> my sun's coming out tomorrow. But those, those five health things, if you include the sun, they will absolutely put you in a better state so then you can move forward. You know, if we're talking about better states, meditation. Meditation changed my life, but that's a whole nother coaching system. But there, you know, there are certain things that when you implement them, and you guys, this is the this is the rhythm you're gonna create with your life. You know what the word cadence means in dressage and in my dressage riders? Right. So we're each gonna find our cadence because sometimes we're gonna be walking elegantly through life, and then other times it'll be a trot. And sometimes we'll be at a full gallop, but knowing how you operate best is when you come to that beautiful place of feeling content with yourself, feeling confident, feeling like, you know what, I'm plucking, this, this is my next goal because I want to. And you, you just know how to put it into your rhythm. It's not this, I want to get rid of overwhelm, that sense of like, I can't handle it all. We can handle it all but it has to be in our own time, in our own rhythm, and enjoying it. Today, my meditation was about um, keeping that tiny little thought in your head of you don't know if today is your last day, which some people can't handle that. They think it's morbid. I find it very motivating. When I think to myself, if today were my last day on this planet, would I be satisfied with my life? I'm not kidding you. I live that way. I do things that are fun. I compliment everyone because I truly mean it. I want my last interaction to be a loving one with people. When I, when I commit to something, I'm fully committed. Because what if today were your last day? Would you be satisfied with that today? That's another little question to write in your journal to, or to put in your planner at the end of the day. When you lay your head down to sleep, do you say to yourself, I love this life that I'm living? Because if you do, then you're doing a great job. And that's the journey. Like the goals are great. I love goals, but I, I just want, I want all of us to be happy, to be really fulfilled and content. And then to share that with other people, to share it with our children, to teach our families how to live with gratitude. We should nix out anxiety. Anxiety is all of us being like, can we get this done? Is everything okay? Like we can stop that. We can one person at a time. We're going to start with this club. Your <laughs> <laughs> anxiety across the board. All you need is a little luck. I love that. L-U-C-C, -C, leg up coaching club. You just need a little luck. So. <laughs> Hi, Miss Melba. Oh, hey. <laughs> okay. I have a question. Okay. Miss Peggy. Okay. So, um, I am now changing my goal to make it the wording better. Can I, can I send it to you and you guys can resend that? Absolutely. Cause here's what happens when you know that someone is reading what you're doing, it raises it in your consciousness. Like I am your consciousness. I pray for all of you. I meditate on you. I think about you when I'm reading books because your goals are in my awareness. And when something comes up that I'm reading and I think, oh, that's really going to help Melva or Krista can use that. That's like the, that's my whole day. I love doing that. So always communicate with me. 
And on your end, it just raises like, oh, Jenna knows what I'm doing. It's why putting it in the chat room, accountability is huge. Someone <laughs> knows what you're up to and that makes a difference. So yes, Peggy, that's the long answer for yes. <laughs> okay. And always reword your goals as many times as you want. So when you read it, it inspires you. You think, yeah, that is me. That is what I'm doing. Because if it doesn't inspire you, I don't think it's juicy enough. You want and then we could put it in the chat room? Absolutely. The more, and when you share that, you inspire someone else who reads it. Like I'm an equestrian athlete because of you, Peggy. I am an equestrian athlete. I have it written everywhere. And <laughs> unless my muffin top is being bad that day, because tacos are like the devil. Tacos are like <laughs> <laughs> Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday is so bad. It's, I cut down on so many things and then tacos come around and you're just like, wow. <laughs> anyway, but I'm an equestrian athlete because Peggy posted that and it just rang true for me. So the other thing about em empowered equestrian, we are here to inspire each other. You know, like this is going to community that is lit up. Everyone catches the fire. And when your fire dies down, it's okay because someone will light you up. And that, you know, if we all take turns keeping each other's fire lit, we'll always be a bonfire. And that's what you can count on. So you're having a down day. You're just not feeling it. Just know that someone else will be there for you. And that's a good feeling, you know, because a lot of us are in barns by ourselves. So this is kind of our community that we have to talk to. A lot of us ride alone a lot of the time. And we have our horses, but they don't give us a lot of good advice unless <laughs> we are horse listening. Then they do, but it's, you know, that's what I want for our community is to really be tight and listening to each other. So if we're, if we're posting in the chat room, it's, it's more than just saying I did great today. It's um, how can I do better or I'm struggling. Is that what right. you're so It's a want or a need, or it is to say, I, I prepped for an hour. So my food choices this mm -hmm. week are, are what I want them to be. Like you want to show the steps that you're taking because that can prompt someone else. And it also just gives you that bump of like, yeah, I'm doing what I said I did. But if you need help, then post for help. Yes. Okay. Right. But it's not just to say, hey, everyone, have a great day. I mean, that's sweet and everything, but I don't want this to become one more brain clog for you guys. That's what I don't want. I want it to be simple, precise, and you're in, you're out, you're living your life. And of the two questions, are we sending you our questions and our solutions for ourselves or are we posting that in the chat room um if you are comfortable i would love for you to share in the chat room if it just feels too vulnerable just email me i just want to get a dialogue going because if you put it in the chat room and then someone says i feel that way too here's what i did you can get group energy but I never want someone to feel too vulnerable. So death, you know, I'm always there to just do personal dialogue with. Okay. And you don't have to, if you have an answer, um, well, I mean, you have your answers, but from there, we're going to together formulate how do we get beyond it. But I'm not asking you to figure it out on your own. That's like the whole discussion. Okay. All right. Thanks. Yeah. So what is, the, what is this Zoom every week going to be like? Um, this is really what I want this to be. So today was the introduction and just setting ground rules and blah, blah, blah. But I want it to be things that came up that you want addressed, that you really like a question, a problem that you think possibly could help other people in the group. So it's really more a Q&A to get personal coaching, but to share. So that's why I didn't say anyone's name because it's then no one knows who it is and we can all just share. So, yeah, Q and A's are great. They open up things for people. If we have a ton of questions, you know, we'll just stay on until they're answered. If someone has to go, you know, you can go. But I, what I want out of this is that everyone gets the value that they want, that you always feel like, you know what? I got the answer I needed. 
I got the strategy. I got a video. I, I want you to, that's all you really need. No one truly needs like, I'm not your watchdog. You know, I'm not there with a whip. Like I joke with Linda Bailey. Um, but I do want to become part of your consciousness. Like, this is what Jenna's talking about. This is my rhythm. I'm in it. I get it. You know, like I love aha moments. The book club is not to give you one more thing to do. I want everyone to establish a reading uh, habit and lifestyle. It's so good for you. You know, am I going to be bossy and say, shut your darn TVs off? No, but I'd love you to. I'd love you to read more and watch less TV. But these are choices and you have to figure out what works for you. Do you want the um, question? Do you want the questions ahead of time, or is this just going to be a spontaneous? No, I would love them ahead of time because then I research it and I go through all my coaching books and I try to find like real, you know, different, not just me going, oh, I'll just say this. So yes, ahead of time, the more prepared I can be, the more I love it. Okay. Yeah. Are we meeting every week like this, or every, every other week? It's every other week. Okay. And then we're going to do a live Zoom for book club. So at that, bring a glass of wine, a cup of tea, a cup of coffee. We're going to pretend that we're in each other's living room. Do you know when that is? Um, I'm, it's going to be the last week of the month. So, because I want to give everyone the maximum amount of time to read the book. Because a few people emailed me, I just got the book. But I'm, keep, I'm also keeping the books, I hope you notice, like, these are pretty easy reads. We're not reading like philosophers or I'm not, this is not school. I want you to enjoy it. So I'm, I'm picking books that can be read, you know, 10 minutes at a time. So it would be the 28th for book club? Um, I'm thinking. 27th? Um, no, the 28th is another one of these calls. So possibly Wednesday the 29th or Monday the 27th before or after. Okay. So every other week, Zoom. Yeah. And then and every month. Then, club. Okay. So it wouldn't be like two times a month and then the book club, or but it's just every other week. Well, I'm, I'm putting out ahead of time what the dates are okay. so you can schedule it into your planner because uh, okay. some months are long or what it'll not work out that way. But yes, and nothing's mandatory. If you can't come, everything's recorded. It'll be in the library. So this is like, all of this is positive pressure. There's no like, you know, must haves. I don't want people to feel obligated to feel supported. If you couldn't make a Zoom and you have a burning question, email me. We can talk, you know, it, this is really, I'm going to accommodate everyone the best that I can. So you'll answer the question we send, even if we can't be there that week. Correct, exactly, okay. yep. Great. Yeah. Anything else? Would Thank you, you mind sharing? Would you mind sharing where you got your necklace? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm afraid okay. she but might I have me. one too. Because Linda Bailey could tell you too. I'm pretty sure, right? I didn't say I, it, Linda. Very <laughs> much. This is my just necklace. I wear it in all my video. I love it now. It's so beautiful. It's so yeah. pretty. And if Linda ever wanted to make money, I have like 30 orders. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> I know. It's, something it's beautiful. So special. You know, it's beautiful. I need that hard up for money. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm going to do is I need to get an anvil because I, when I hammer it out, I use a big, heavy, I think it's a 24 ounce ball peen hammer. We're twinning. But it's, up, it's up high on, a, on my husband's vice. And my elbow, like after making a few necklaces, my yeah. elbow kills me for like a, a tennis elbow week. Just from making it is like a tennis elbow. Oh. I'm like, <laughs> it looks so beautiful. Need, oh, thank, thank you. I thank love you. it so much. Very nice. So I know that there's at least six or seven women on this call who are new to the group. So we just want to welcome you. Some of us do know each other because we've done coaching together. We're part of a planner group but we want to know and love you too. So don't be shy to speak up. This is a completely um, a safe space. Everyone here is good energy. If they're not, they would not be here. 
So as I look through the names um, and you haven't said anything, I just hope that you feel welcomed and feel safe. And each, you know, the longer we're together, that's when the comfort grows. So just know that your goals mean everything to us. And even if you're new, brand new, so hold on to that thought. All right, anyone else have a question? Otherwise, I'm gonna let you guys get to your, your planners, your life, your families. Let's, let's all make a little solemn promise to spend less time on Facebook, unless it's the Smarties group, and more time in our life. Can we all yes. just make that yeah. promise? Pinky yeah, Right, Thank let's you. all pinky smile. You. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I, I feel like it's this weird vortex and I'm watching duck videos and not like, why am I watching duck videos? I have things to do. <laughs> I have Mari kondo almost the entire house. <laughs> oh, I'm my so, I'm so oh my God. I could come and whip your house out. Like, I'm a machine. I just blast music. My poor family, the, the, the joke with Doug is every morning, do I bring you joy? Because <laughs> he's like... <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you're not folding him like a t-shirt, Jenna. No, that's, that's but I, I, actually, I, my closet's done. It's beautiful. The only thing I have not done is the garage. And it's like, oh, it's so, it looks like so much work. Everything's heavy, like gas cans, like, oh. but it's going to get done. I'm, and I will post before and after, so and you'll be like, yeah, fun. I am doing that. Here for not keeping I, your commitment. <laughs> I'm sorry, say that again. Is that a trigger for not keeping your commitment? Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Consequence of Mari Khan. That woman changed all of our lives. It's amazing. You go from she like scares not, me. She's a she is a little scary. The <laughs> you, you guys, they have the funniest memes about her, but they're just, they're not that friendly. But they have a funny bone. And I was gonna post one and then I thought, no, that we have to keep it good energy. But um <laughs> But yeah, I went from not knowing about her to having the book and watching the show. And now I use her name like a verb. I'm Mari Kondoing. It's like, that's not a verb. That's somebody's name. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Well, if you think of something after this call, email me. Know in your heart, this club is going to get better and better. Oh, the interviews. So every month, I'm going to interview someone that I think we all should be introduced to. So Thank this you, Mama. Is Sorry, I didn't come in. Oh, let me get Linda. This week is going to be... Um, yeah. Have a good night. <laughs> this month is going to be... That's Sorry, Linda, I muted you. Um, Callie King who I know a lot of you know, but Callie's amazing. And she does natural horsemanship and all kinds of great clinics. And she invited me to do a, to run a retreat with her, a women's riding retreat in Costa Rica. I know Mary Beth was like, I'm like, me too, me too. So we're gonna do really great things together. Um, she's doing this whole equine university and she wants me to be the coach in it. So she's amazing. So I'm going to bring her in, but then I have interviewed before I did Smarties, all these different riding instructors or, you know, different people. I'm going to do one interview a month on a zoom call. And that way we bring someone new and fresh, you know, whether they're dressage or barrel racing or, you know, it'll just be a, a fun way to, I just unmuted you all, um, to bring new voices in. So that's something I'm really excited. Oh, there we go, telephones. All right, so I'm going to end there, let you guys go back to your lives, and I will see you inside the club. Thank you all for being here. Bye, Jenna. Thank Bye, you. Everyone. Good night, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you.